with a messy little face. Hi Scorpio, welcome to March 2015. As you go into March, there's a wonderful Jupiter trine Uranus that's exact on the third. And Jupiter has been in a very important area of your chart. Jupiter is in the area of your reputation in the world, your profession in the world, your destiny in the world. And it's in harmony with Uranus and Venus on March 3rd and 4th. Venus and Uranus are in the area of your health, your work, your lifestyle, your service to the world, your daily routine, your health habits, your diet habits, and it's sending positive energy up to Jupiter at the top of the chart in that tenth house, in that area of your destiny in the world, you know, how you define your unique individuality to the world, how you define success for yourself. This is very supportive, very positive energy. Venus will also couple with Uranus and square Pluto on the 4th. Now, Pluto, your ruling planet, is moving very quickly. In fact, Pluto will retrograde April 16th through September 24th. Pluto will make it up to about almost 16 degrees Capricorn before he starts to uh, move backwards. Uranus will make it up to about 21 degrees Cap uh, Aries and will uh, retrograde July 26th through December 25th. So this is about how you work, how you take care of yourself, and how you use your mind to create the life you want. Pluto is in the area of your thought patterns, your habit patterns, your consciousness, your day-to-day -day interactions with your environment, how you communicate, how you talk to yourself, your style of speaking and listening, how you talk to others. And it's now being challenged by Venus. So on the 4th, there could be power struggles at work, or you could be um, needing to rest and recharge your batteries. You could be working too much and you're not feeling as well because you're pushing too hard. So be aware of that, of uh, how you're feeling and how you're taking care of yourself. The way out is through that Jupiter energy, which is so positive for you over the next couple of years. Jupiter is really working for you to advance you in the world and promote what you do whether it's working for others or working for yourself. Because even when he goes into Virgo, that's going to increase the money you make. So you're in a strong Jupiter cycle. There's a fabulous Virgo full moon on the 5th. This is a wonderful moon, and it's in harmony with your ruling planet, Pluto. And it happens for you in the area of your goals, your friends, your hopes, your wishes, sudden luck, sudden opportunity, your ideals, the money you make from the business you own, or the money you make from the company you work for. So this is a wonderful full moon for you, pouring positive energy into any planets you have in Scorpio, because Virgo sextiles Scorpio, and so this is a wonderful energy for you. This is a very uplifting energy, it's a, a, an empowering energy, and it can help you reach your dreams. It can help you reach your goals. So you're going to love the Virgo full moon. And it's in harmony with the sun too. So those of you looking for love or interested in romance, it's on. For those of you already coupled, it just stimulates the sexual chemistry and the fun and the romance. It's nice. It's really nice. Pisces is a sister sign pours positive energy into you, and Pisces rules your area of true love and romance, self-confidence, creative self-expression, and Pluto is in harmony with both lights, exactly. The sun is at almost 15 degrees Pisces, the moon is at almost 15 degrees Virgo, and Pluto is in harmony with both lights, both sun and the moon. 
And so this is a wonderful time for you to be dating. This is a wonderful time for you to be meeting someone new or strengthening your existing relationships. It's just a real positive energy for you and gives you something to look forward to. That rhymes. <laughs> Then Daylight Savings Times begins on March 8th, Sunday, in the States. And then Mars, your traditional ruler, will be in harmony with Jupiter on the 10th. Because Mars is in Aries, and he loves being in Aries. Challenge is, on the 11th, he couples with Uranus and squares Pluto. Okay, so watch out for power struggles in your relationships, the ones that you work with. This is coming out of the area of work. So people you work with. Is there any kind of power struggle going on there? Are you fighting with your own mind? Are you reliving things from the past? Is it time for you to let it go? You have made enormous strides when Saturn was in your sign. Saturn made you as tough as Teflon. And you're strong. You're one of the most strongest signs of the zodiac, if not the strongest. You have the ability to regenerate yourself better than anybody. So don't go back to the past. Don't think about the past. Burn the past. Live in the now. Be here now. All powers in the now. And you have so much to look forward to. So if these energies are dredging up, you know, what went on in the past and what happened before, it's your opportunity to let it go. Let go of what no longer serves you. Let go of what's happened before. You have no control over that. Your power lies in what you choose to focus on now. Wherever the mind goes, energy follows. Focus on what you want. Focus on what is working. Focus on the good things that are happening for you this year and will happen. Mercury enters Pisces on the 11th. This is very good for romance and relationship. Getting out there, having some fun. Pisces is your sister sign, so any planets that go into Pisces pours positive energy into your sun in Scorpio, your moon in Scorpio, any planet you have in Scorpio. So this is a strong time for you. This is your time. It's a good time for Scorpios. You're able to ride this energy better than a lot of us. So you have a lot going for you. And Saturn will retrograde in Sagittarius on March 14th. And that's okay. Now, Saturn's going to dip back into Scorpio, you know, and we'll make it back to about uh, 27 degrees. And that's okay. I'll tell you, I would rather work with Saturn than some of these other energies. With Saturn, you are being groomed for success. Yeah, you got to toe the line. Yeah, you have to work long hours. Yes, you cannot cut corners. Yes, you have to eat all your vegetables. <laughs> you have to take care of yourself. But also what Saturn's wanting you to do now is to really look at what truly matters to you. What do you love and value? What's really important for you? What are you doing to improve your self-confidence? What are you doing to improve your self-esteem, your self-worth, your self-appreciation? Do what makes you feel good. Do what makes you feel empowered. Do what increases your self-esteem. And that's not stewing over what's been. Don't relive the old war stories. Be here now. All power's in the now. Now, Pluto and Uranus are having their final square on the 16th. <laughs> I can't wait for these two to be done. <sighs> okay, Pluto and Uranus are, are going to begin to separate after March 16th and 17th. They go exact on the 16th and 17th, and they begin to separate. Now, they will form a five-degree separation because Pluto gets up to 16 degrees, and then he retrogrades on the 16th of April. Uranus gets up to 21 degrees until he retrogrades on July 26. By the end of the year, by December, there'll be two degrees in separation. That's what I mean by the energy still going to hang around. However, the good news is there's going to be a five-degree orb of separation. 
So that's going to give you a lot of breathe, breathing room. That's going to give everybody a lot of breathing room. They're never going to form an exact square again. And so, well, for another 60 years, 50 years. So, so this is good. And so this is a, you know, a really important time for you to be looking at how your brain works how you talk to yourself, your thought patterns, your habit patterns, as well as how you take care of yourself mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, how you work and what changes do you need to make so that all of you is moving forward, right? Because, you know, it's like the chariot, you know, the, um, the chariot card in the tarot, you know, he's up there and he's leading the horses you know if you got one horse out back there reliving the past and you got one horse over here jumping into the future you know you're being pulled right so Pluto and Uranus are going to show you this in March and April where you're being pulled where you're being distracted where you're wasting your energy what you want to do is get all your horses going in the same direction and that's forward forward focused and so for you, it's really important to look at, are you here now? Are you moving forward? Is all of you moving forward? Are you paying attention to what you need? Are you paying attention to what you're thinking, right? Our thoughts create our reality. And so your wealth is in your health. So if you're brooding over the past or reliving the past, then that's wasted energy and that energy could be going in nourishing and nurturing your atom cells and electrons and making you aware of the opportunities available for you right now so in other words if you're holding on to some relationship that didn't turn out the way you wanted it to from years ago or months ago and there's someone beautiful right in front of you right now who would love to love you baby <laughs> love to love you baby <laughs> and and you're not seeing that person because you're just still rawr, what happened in the past hmm okay so be here now because love is in the air for you here in uh, March Scorpio and you want to be available and so we need all of you here now all of you here now seeing the opportunities right in front of you Now, Venus will enter Taurus on the 17th. That's the area of love. Now, this is good for Scorpios that are already coupled. And it's good for Scorpios that are interested in meeting someone really nice. Someone good. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, and abundance in the area of marriage and partnership is a wonderful placement for her. And Mars is going to join her too at the end of the month. I don't want to jump ahead, but this is good. Then there is this amazing Pisces new moon, super moon, total solar eclipse. This is the first solar eclipse of the year. And guess what? Pisces is your sister sign pouring positive energy into you. So you're going to like this eclipse. And it's in the area of romance, true love. So for those of you that want to see the eclipse, it will happen in the wee hours and well that's here in the states it's going to happen wherever you are on the planet for those of you living in Europe northern Africa the Middle East Western Asia and the northern Atlantic Ocean you will be able to see this total solar eclipse and it's a supermoon which means it's closer to the earth, direct alignment with the sun of the earth, making it extra powerful, powerful, powerful. Now this is a wonderful Pisces moon. It is your sister sign pouring positive energy into any planet you have in uh, Scorpio, and it's in harmony with Saturn. It's kind of, um, uh, it has a sesquadrate with uh, Jupiter, but that's okay. It's in harmony with Saturn because Saturn's, you know, so early in Sagittarius, and this is at 29 degrees, 27 minutes Pisces. This is wild. And so this is good for your money. This is good for your self-esteem. This is good for your self-confidence. This is good energy for you to, like I said, you can meet someone new and all of a sudden you're feeling like, wow, I still got it. You know, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like you're really good about like, you know, where you are now and what you've been through and where you're going it, you're, you're seeing the rainbows okay the clouds are separating the rainbows out 
sky is clearing, the birds are singing, and so it looks good for you. Now this is a wild eclipse because eclipses are the most powerful transit you can experience. They herald major beginnings and major completions. So for you, it's about finishing up, you know, projects, anything that you're involved creatively with, um, children leaving the nest. It's about um, completing a relationship, but also being open to new relationship. And just minutes after this eclipse, the moon moves into Aries. And then 13 hours later, the sun enters Aries on the same day of the 20th. The 20th could be the biggest day of the year. It's just so action-packed. And portals open when we have eclipses. And so too when we have the equinox and we have happy spring in the northern hemisphere. Yay! Happy fall in the southern hemisphere. And we have, it's the first day of the year for astrologers, western astrologers. When the sun goes into Aries, it's our happy new year! And so this is a powerful day. This whole month is incredibly intense and powerful. And so, right after the total solar eclipse, 13 hours later, you have the equinox. So this is a wonderful day to uh, meditate, do ritual, do ceremony, set your intention for what you want to create this year, and really connect to heaven on earth. The portals open, the veil thins, and you can walk and talk with the Ascended Masters. You can be in the etheric as you walk on this physical plane. You can be with the angels. You can be with elemental life. You can be with other great spiritual beings in other dimensions. As you raise your vibration, you expand consciousness, and the portals are opening, and you can shoot to the highest levels of nirvana if you can handle the vibration. It is an amazing time to, you know, really connect with source, connect with the spiritual aspect of your life. And it's a wonderful energy for you. It's happening in a very fun area. So maybe this is the beginning of fun, having a lot of fun, having some fun, having fun. And then the sun enters Aries on the 20th, and that's going to start focusing you on your health and your work, which is good, because um, if you're taking care of yourself, you're going to feel good. Your wealth is in your health. So it's all about taking care of yourself and your daily routine and, you know, really using this energy to empower yourself. Mercury will enter Aries on the 30th, and then Mars enters the area of relationship on the 31st. So this is a strong time for you. For those of you looking for love, it's on all month. It's amazing. And you could meet someone really significant. This is also a, a wonderful energy for you to, you know, play the scratch cards or buy a lotto ticket, you know, you could win. And I have people feeding back to me that they're winning. <laughs> so um, you never know. And money looks good for you because Jupiter's so working for you and the Virgo moon is working for you and even the Pisces is working for you because Saturn in the area of your money is in harmony with the... Uh, supermoon total eclipse so there's a lot of good energy in here for you to increase your earnings increase your income and that's going to continue as Jupiter moves forward into Virgo so it's on for you health how is your health your wealth is in your health without you what do we have so it's important that you're paying attention to that mind body spirit connection right and that you're in present time and you're letting the past burn away forget about it forget about it <laughs> and be here now because you have so much to look forward to spirituality if you're doing ritual meditation you're taking care of yourself especially around this full moon on the fifth and the 20th and 
you are allowing yourself to raise your vibration. When you raise your vibration, you expand consciousness. When you expand consciousness, you're ready for new opportunity, new relationship, new love, new business opportunities. It's on for you. For those of you already coupled, it could be a sizzling time. It could be, you know, the time where you take your vows again. Go on a second honeymoon. Go on a fifth honeymoon. Then Venus and Mars, the divine lovers, they move from Aries into Taurus, and that's the area of partnership. So this could be a time where, you know, you meet someone really significant. And, you know, whether it's personal or business or both. For those of you who are already coupled, it just strengthens the relationship. This energy can strengthen the relationship. And it's wonderful. This is a strong time for you, Scorpio. So let go of what no longer serves you. And you will soar higher. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, favoring, sharing, and Google Plus and my podcast. Scorpio, you're so awesome. Thank you for subscribing. You totally rock. And if you would like for me to take a detailed look at your astrology, it's very easy. You go to my astrology service page, you purchase a session. Upon checkout, you get the link to my schedule. You get scheduled. Or if you've got uh, a, a relationship you want to talk about or a business opportunity and you want to do some coaching around it, you go to my coaching page, you purchase a session. Upon checkout, you get the link to my schedule. You get scheduled. Off and running, rocking and rolling. So until next time, Scorpio. Let go and go higher. March is a magnificent month to let go of what no longer serves you. Whether it's a belief or an ideal or a structure or a relationship or a job situation, let it go. Let go of what no longer serves you. And you will soar higher. Let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore. Let it go, let it go, and I'll rise like the break of dawn. Here I stand in the light of day, let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway.